SD and I wanted to go over how to um, adjust your white balance in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements using ACR. I'm sh I shoot raw so my image will automatically open in ACR which is Adobe Camera Raw. Um, if you shoot JPEG you can actually open them up into ACR as well. Uh, usually if you click like I'm in Photoshop this is Bridge. Uh, if you're in Elements you don't have this but if you're in full Photoshop you can right click open in Camera Raw. Whether it's a JPEG or a raw image it will do it for you. If you are in Elements you can go to File and instead of Open, Open As and then you can change your file setting to be raw underneath. Um, there's some tutorials out there to show you how to open up a JPEG as into your ACR. So we're going to just open up this one. I let's double click it. Alright, and then the camera will open up for me. And yours may look slightly different depending on um, what version of Photoshop you have, and if you have elements, you don't have as many options. I'm just sizing it down a little bit. It's a little larger than I wanted. You won't have as many options up here or over on this side right here. You don't get all these uh, options, but we're not going to deal with those. We're just talking about white balance, so it's okay. Um, because what I'm going to do, you can do in Elements or Photoshop. Um, first, I'm going to, it's slightly under exposed, so I'm going to bump it up just a bit. There we go. And, um, I usually I always shoot in Kelvin, so for this one I'd already up the Kelvin just a bit because we're in a very shaded area, uh, and it was <clears throat> in the evening as the sun was setting down anyway. So I'm gonna take my dropper and I'm gonna drop it on her dress to see how much more warmth it wants it, and then and just give it a second to process that. There we go. As you can see over here, it on the temperature, oops, it has warmed it up, added more yellow tones, and as well on the tint, it's added magenta. And um, I actually like the way it looks. I may pull just a little bit of the magenta out, and maybe a tiny bit of the warmth. And we'll go back on that. I actually like the warmth on that one. So I usually just um, fine tune it. I'm calibrated on my computer so that I know when I print it should match the color pretty well on um, here. That's the easiest way to do it is just use the dropper and click on a neutral part of the image. If you have gray in your image, it works better. Like if you have a gray card you take a picture of, click on your gray card or white piece of paper um, with the same lighting, then um, set the white balance on that white piece of paper or the gray card uh, and you can process the rest of your image uh, exactly the same with the previous conversion. So for my next image instead of having to go in and writing down, maybe writing down this or something, I can just hit oh, OK or done and then let's hit done actually. Hit done and go back to bridge just a second. Okay, and we're back in the bridge, and let's say if we wanted to open this one up, and instead of having to either write that down or remember what you were, or um, fine-tuning it as well and not knowing for certain, I can just double click down and hit previous conversion in um, ACR. And then all, now my white balance is exactly the same as the last image so they can be more consistent on the um, that location and I um, wanted to open this one back up and talk about on the temperature slider which is right here um, it represents uh, as you can see blue and yellow actually the temperature tint slider kind of represents all the colors mixed in together um, to help you find the correct white balance for your overall image from uh, yellow, blue, green, magenta, and actually all four of those can, if you work them around, can get 
you can alter your cyan and red as well. So temperature, if you go up, it's going to add this yellow, and you can see it shows a color on here um, as well. You're going towards yellow, you're going towards blue, and you can see as I pull it up, it's going to add, just give it a second, you'll see how crazy warm it gets. As you can see, it's super yellow, warm tones. If I pull all the way down, it's going to get really cool um, towards the blue tones. As you can see, there's my Smurf. All right, we're going to pull it back to where it was. And the same with Tat. As you can see, to the left is a green color. And we'll see if it will switch from really quick. And she's much more greener. And if you go to the right, it's going to add more magenta tones into it. As you can see. And then you can uh, mess around with those to alter different colors. You can also, on this white balance, you can click down and you have all these options that are similar to what your camera is. If you have shot in RAW, if you shoot in JPEG, you don't get as many options. You just have as shot, auto, and custom, if I remember correctly. Um, because you, uh, RAW allows you to choose your white balance afterwards. It's also good to shoot in RAW because um, your white balance, you can... If you correct white balance, if your white balance is really off and you shoot in JPEG, when you correct it, it can actually uh, deteriorate the quality of your image, whether it's blowing out your highlights or, or adding, it just doesn't look as good as when you shoot in RAW. RAW allows more flexibility and allows you to easily change your white balance. So I highly recommend shooting RAW. But as you can see, this is what I shot it on. I'm going to go through all these really quick. Uh, auto would be what... Um, Photoshop's kind of figuring out what it thinks it needs. Daylight is this is generally the number it's going to pick every time. It should. Uh, cloudy goes up just a little more because usually it's a little bit cooler. Shades quite a bit cooler than daylight, so it's going to add more yellows. Uh, tungsten. As you can see, I wanted to add a lot of cool tones right there, and a lot of blue. Uh, fluorescent, so it's going to add, add magenta. It's cooler as well, but it's going to add more magenta in this also, because fluorescents tend to be green. And flash is pr uh, about close to a daylight. I think daylight added some magenta in as well compared to flash. And then custom is whatever you choose it to be, which is what I prefer to do anyway. I'm going to go back to previous conversion so I can have it be the color I want it to be earlier. There we go. Hopefully that will help you guys figure out how to uh, choose your white balance when you're after you're done shooting. Um, like if your white balance is off of it. And not, mine isn't always, but I like to um, go in and alter it just a bit if needed. It's pretty easy. Especially when you use the white balance tool and just drop on a neutral part of the image. And generally there is some point in the image that's black or white or gray that you could use. Alright, thank you very much. Have a good day. <laughs>